David Rosenberg has been helping us navigate the world of sleep disorders. Okay, so what are some of the biggest myths about sleep? One is don't wake somebody up who's uh, sleepwalking. Uh, what you should do is gently guide them back to bed. They're not going to have a heart attack if you wake them up. You're more likely to be injured if you wake them up because they become defensive, okay? The other one is that we only need four or five hours of sleep, and then we can make up for it on the weekends. We can't. We develop insulin resistance. We develop hypertension and cardiac problems, and you can't make up for it by sleeping a few hours extra on the weekends. You've got to change your lifestyle and try to get seven to eight hours of sleep, if you can, during the weekday on a daily basis. And should you go to bed at the same time every night for the most you, part? You should try to keep a set sleep-wake schedule. That's very important. Try not to vary it too much on the weekends because then if you, end up, if you do that, come Monday you have a hard time getting to sleep at your normal hour. So try to keep it set and try to keep that wake time, most importantly, at a set time. And, I mean, I'm really interested in this. I, I have studied because I do have some sleep issues. But sure. you should also not have necessarily the computer or the TV screen on when worst, you go to bed. Worst thing if you have insomnia. If you, know, if you sleep well, you could have a Fellini movie going on. What's the big deal? I mean, in your bedroom. But if mm -hmm. you're a person who has trouble sleeping, computers, video games, anything that shines bright light into your retina is going to take whatever melatonin your body's beginning to produce at 9 o'clock and just destroy it, turn it to zero. And so you'll have a hard time falling asleep. If you, if you smoke cigarettes, computers, bright lights, things like that. What about that. reading? Reading, reading if, uh, if, you, if the light is, is indirect, clip on, a reading is okay. I don't think that's a problem. I try to get people to read outside of the bedroom if they have insomnia, but if you don't have insomnia, then why not? What's the number one thing we all should do or know about with these sleep issues? Well, that we should sleep seven or eight hours. That if, we're, if, if we have children who are adolescents, they need nine hours of sleep. And we should also be aware that if we're having difficulty staying awake, fatigued, irritability, moodiness, it may be related to our sleep. And if we don't have a bed partner, we might actually need to go and speak to a healthcare worker about the problem or ask your bed partner if there's anything unusual going on during your sleep. All right. Really great, great advice. How many of you learned things today? I learned a lot. I did. The comedian W.C. Fields said the best cure for insomnia is to get a lot of sleep. It turns out that getting the right amount of sleep is the best cure for many of the things that ail us. So if you think you have a sleep issue, please see a doctor who specializes in sleep disorders. It may change your life. I want to thank all of our guests for sharing their stories with us today, and a big special thank you to Dr. Robert Rosenberg. For more information about sleep disorders, log on to the RickyLakeShow.com. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Sleep well. <laughs>